When you're integrating over a rectangle, the order of integration actually doesn't matter because both of the limit sets are numbers. So if we have x as the outer integral, then x is just ranging from 0 to 4. Whereas if x is the inner integral, it's still integrating 0 to 4. If y is the inner integral, it's going 0 to 3. If y is the outer integral, then it's still going 0 to 3. So rectangles are simple. If we use a triangular region bounded by the x-axis, the y-axis, and y equals 6 minus 2x, now the order of integration matters. Now suppose we're first going to use the x as the outer integral. The outer integral has the easiest limits. You just get numbers. The lowest value of x is 0, the highest is 3, so this is 0 to 3. The trickier bit is what's inside. For any given value of x, pick a random spot, y is going to range from this line up to this line, so which means it's going to go from 0 up to 6 minus 2x. And those are the limits of integration for that triangle. If you do it in the other order, however, y is the outer limit, so y simply runs from 0 to 6. X is now the one that's going to vary. Pick a random Y, and X varies from here to here. Now this X is equal to 2X is 6 minus Y, so X is 6 minus Y over 2. So the X integral is going to range from 0 to 6 minus Y over 2. Now a slightly more complicated example. We have y equals x, y equals 18 minus 2x, and y equals 0. If we want to integrate over this region and have x be the outer integral, we have a little bit of a problem. We are tempted to just say 0 to 9, but the problem is the upper function is different in two places. Now, if you solve these two equations, you find out that this is the point 6, 6. And so what happens is you have to integrate x from 0 to 6 with one upper function, and then you have to integrate from 6 to 9 for the rest of it. Because if we are in the first piece somewhere over here, then y is going to range from 0 to x, because that's the low value and the high value. On the other hand, if we're past the point 6 and we pick an x over here, y is ranging from 0 up to 18 minus 2x. So we have to add both of those integrals together to get the area. What happens if we do it in the other order, though? If we integrate dy, we only have to do it once because the, over the entire range of y, the lower limit is this curve and the upper limit is that curve. Lower and upper, meaning in value. So the y limits are 0 to 6, because that's the full range of values for y. And then for a random value of y, x ranges from here to here. Here, x equals y. And here, x equals 18 minus y over 2. So the limits here are y to 18 minus y over 2. Notice the outer variable can appear in the inner limits, but the outer limits have to be numbers. Also, you can see that to integrate over x on the outside, you have to do two integrals, whereas to integrate over y, there's only one. So depending which way you arrange it, one of these integrals might be easier than the other, which is why it's good to know how to switch back and forth, because you don't want to do it the hard way if there's an easier way by rearranging. Now for a curved function, y equals 4 minus x squared, an upside down parabola, and bounded by the x-axis. If we integrate over x on the outside, x is just ranging from negative 2 to 2, because there's no change in what's the top function or the bottom function. And the inner limits are, in fact, 0 up to 4 minus x squared. On the other hand, if we're integrating over y, y ranges from 0 to 4. 
lowest value to highest value. And then for a particular value of y, x ranges from here to here. Now this value, if we solve this for x, is the square root of 4 minus y. And what's that? x equals negative square root of 4 minus y. And those are our limits, negative square root 4 minus y to positive square root 4 minus y. So this looks a lot friendlier, but of course it depends on what your function is that you're actually trying to integrate, which is the easier problem. But those are two ways to get the same problem done. Now for an infinite region. We're talking about the lower diagonal half of the first quadrant. It's bounded by y equals x, y equals 0, and goes on forever to the right. So our x limits will run from 0 to infinity. And for a given x value, our y value will run from 0 to x. If we want to integrate in the other order, y is going to range from 0 to infinity. What will be the range for x? For a given y value, we start here and we go infinitely to the right, which means that x starts out equal to y and goes to infinity. So depending on your circumstances, uh, having one integral that goes to infinity might be better than having two integrals that go to infinity. But there would be times where the other way around is useful. While I have this example, I want to jump tracks a little and show you yet another way using polar coordinates. In polar coordinates, this is actually a simple integral because we're talking about an angle that simply ranges between two constant values and a radius that ranges from zero to infinity. So in fact, this is the polar form of a rectangle, so the order of the limits doesn't matter. So if we have dr on the outside, then r is going to go from zero to infinity, and theta is going to run from zero to pi over four, because that's 45 degrees. Important tip though, we need an r here. r d theta is a little bit of length. d theta is just a little bit of angle. So when you switch to polar form, don't forget to put the r there. This is d area as is this, as is this. In polar form, r d theta dr is dA.